Hello, God equips all of us with everything that we need to do his perfect will. Welcome back to Kingdom Minded Thinkers. Let us prepare for this Sunday, Lord's will. So today's topic and title is equipped with hope. And this is your Sunday school lesson. And this is for May 14th, 2023. And we're coming out of the book of second Peter's, uh, second Peter chapter, uh, one verses four through 14 in the King's James version. Before we get started, let us have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for your anointing on today. We come to you through your son, Jesus, Lord. Thank you for equipping us in this season, Father, for the things that you have called us to do with our everyday life and things of that nature. Father, we thank you, God, for just being a very present help. And Lord, I loose it up on every teacher, every Sunday school student, and every uh, Sunday school uh, teacher that's on YouTube, that you continue to equip all of us so that we are can help each other and teach the word and others may come and learn and understand what you are saying and to, uh, and, and planting seeds in our lives. And so Lord, I ask you to just bless us all mightily in Jesus name. Amen. All right. So let's go ahead and get ready to talk about the Sunday school lesson. Excited about another great Sunday school lesson. All right. So let's go ahead and go to Bible truth. Bible truth is Jesus Christ is the foundation upon which we build our faith and sustain our hope. Now, when we look at foundation, we looking at like, if you use an example of a house, is the house made on solid ground or is it on sinking sand? Jesus is that solid foundation and on him will never sink. Amen. And so we have to have that solid foundation and that lets us know that Jesus truly is the foundation upon which we build our faith to sustain hope. Amen. All right. So let's go to wisdom peace and grace in Jesus. While you guys are getting that out with your Sunday school lesson, uh, look at the title real quick. It says equipped. And when it says equipped, it's got ED at the end. So that's past tense, past tense. And so looking at, um, something already done past tense, but looking at the supply of necessary needs. So whenever you're explaining this or when you're taking this in, God equipped us. He's already put everything on the inside of us that we need for us to perform what he's called us to do for us to live a righteous lifestyle. Amen. So it's already put there and it says with items necessary for a particular purpose. What is that purpose? I'm so glad you asked. That purpose is to live a righteous lifestyle and spread the good news, which is the gospel of Jesus Christ. All right. So wisdom, peace, and grace in Jesus, because all these things we find in him. All right. So we're talking about the apostle Peter. He had wrote, um, second Peter. And so, uh, just to get you, uh, right where we need to be in the Sunday school lesson, it opens up and lets us know that, uh, with, uh, second Peter with a, It has a twofold purpose is what it was talking about. Now, one was to warn about false teachers, uh, teaching false doctrines, you know, and then the second was to uh, exhort them to grow in wisdom and the knowledge of Jesus Christ to grow in their faith. So why do you think that that is? Why do we don't need to just get saved and say, okay, we're done and don't do anything else. Why is it that we do need to, after we've given our life to Christ, open up the good book, which is the Bible, that B I B L E read it, start learning and pray and have a prayer life and have a relationship with God. Well, the reason for that is, is because the more knowledge you get and the more deeper you get in God, the, um, 
the harder it is to uproot you from what is truth because you've heard the truth and you know it for yourself. That's just like if someone was in school and you went uh, and set up on the teacher and they start teaching some things that you know are not true. Like if they said two plus two equals seven, you're going to be looking like, no, that ain't what that is because you've already had a deeper understanding and knowledge that two plus two is always going to be four and never seven. Amen. All right. So now at this time, Peter knew that he didn't have uh, long to live. Now look at this and compare it to the time when Jesus was ha having his, um, <clears throat> when the scriptures was talking about how he was at his final hours and what was on his mind. Now he, to Peter of being a follower of Jesus Christ, a disciple and he didn't have long to live. And so what was in his heart, he shared with the saints, amen, with the disciples, with the followers. He shared what was in his heart. And so us as children of God, we don't know how long our time is upon this on this earth. But what we do know is what's important is sharing the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. That should always be on our minds. Amen. He wants to share what would happen when he is no longer was no longer with them and rem and reminded them that the truth of God's word is unchanging. It has not changed. Remember, Jesus came to fulfill the law, not to abolish the law, which is do away with it. He even lets us know that he said, I came to fulfill the law, you know. All right. So now called by God, Peter took his responsibilities serious. And so this stood out to me a little bit. And so you guys can make a little note there because that's another uh, uh, a key note on something that we need to examine ourselves with. Are we being responsible and are we taking it serious? The things that we do for Christ, because only what you do for God, amen. And Christ Jesus will last. Are you taking your responsibility serious? Nothing else matters because nothing else will last. Amen. All right. So um, he took it seriously. So that let that be encouragement to you and I on today that we will take things more serious. And somebody said, well, I'm, I'm already serious. We'll find an area where it's not as serious and get more serious in that area. All righty. Now you, we all need to do a self-examination to identify, uh, godly characteristics that, uh, Peter list here. Um, uh, <clears throat> and then, uh, we need to look at the things that we, that, that he has listed in this Sunday school lesson and see what we don't have that we need to add and apply to our lives. It's always good to do a self-examination and say that with me. It's always good to do a self-examination. Amen. And if you're new around here, welcome again to kingdom minded thinkers thank you for stopping by and allowing us to teach the word of god with you on today please drop a comment below and say hello let us know that you're here we're growing in grace and we're growing in god and we're looking for things to just get better with the way we think the way we talk the way we walk and everything and if you're looking for growth and change and you're looking to change your mindset this is a good place for you to come in and 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 be a part of so hit the subscribe button below so that you can get new notifications every time we uh, upload, upload new content. Amen. All right. So now let's talk about uh, the self-evaluation, looking at the characteristics and talking about patience, talking about temperance, talking about godliness, talking about virtue, all these things that we're going to talk about here in just a few moments. They evaluate these things and is there something that you're not doing? Is there a lack in your, uh, in your, in your life right now with any of these characteristics, excuse me. All right. So, um, let's go to the introduction. By the time Peter wrote the second epistle, Paul, his co-laborer, uh, you know, it's part in the, they, they working together in the gospel. And how many of you know that when we work together in the gospel gospel, we can do much more together because, of, uh, we, we, we come together as a body of Christ and we can go out and get more souls. Now, Paul was probably, uh, had been mortared by this time, you know, uh, killed and, and the church was undergoing some fierce persecution. That's, that's, a, that's a high level of persecution right there. 
And if it's a baby in Christ, can you imagine the, the turmoil and the things that's going through their mind as children of God being babies in Christ and not being as strong as one that has been in this or has walked with Jesus uh, personally like Peter has done. Um, <clears throat> the, 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 the hearts that uh, are aching and hurting and longing for some rescue of some kind of strength from the Lord. And so looking at that, uh, and, and, and just kind of picturing that we go through a lot of things right now, don't we? But we know that God is with us. That's why we come and we go to church and we come together and commune together. We lift each other up and build each other up. We don't just live saved on Sundays. Y'all we live saved every day of the week. Peter understood the persecuted believers because he was in there with them. We're all being persecuted. Even now we have people talk about us now, you know, they may call you a roll, a holy roller, but take that with confidence because guess what? You going to roll right on into heaven when God calls us home. Amen. So it's not a bad thing. He just, they just speaking something that's true about you. So take that with, with confidence as a compliment because they just speaking the truth about you. All right. So um, now he understood the persecuted believers because this was a place where he could relate to uh, who longed for peace and the knowledge. All right. So the knowledge of what? Of Jesus Christ. God is, 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 is our, uh, our father. And so through his son, Jesus, we get to know him. So to have that knowledge and have that peace is what they were looking for because you know, persecution just does not feel good, but yet, and still they needed encouragement to hold on, to hold out so that they wouldn't fall and faint and, and fade away and, and run from the faith. Peter knows that it is through the intimate relationship with, uh, and a personal knowledge of God and his son, Jesus Christ, that they may, they might experience the grace and peace they yearn for that intimate relationship with God, the peace of God, you know, you can, you can have that and it can be something that you live with daily and it's no respect of person. Even now when you're being persecuted, let me give you some words of encouragement. When you're being persecuted by your loved ones or family members or whoever, maybe someone on the job, you can find peace in that situation. Somebody may say how, well, you can get in your word and pray for that individual ask God to fill your heart with love so that you can throw uh, uh, everything that's negative that they said to you in the trash can because those are not your thoughts that does not belong to you it belongs to Satan and when Satan bring you something just put it in the trash can and put the lid on it you don't even have to accept it and receive it amen so just put the lid on it and throw it away. All right. So now looking at talking about being an intimate with God, getting to know him, that'll build your faith up as well. That's why we need to be in our prayer closets more being in that time with fasting and praying more being in that time with talking to him and having that right relationship with him more, because the more you get closer to him, the better you feel, the better you feel, the more knowledge you have. And then we have the mind of Christ. We know these things must happen because God told us that it would. Now, if they hated Jesus, they, 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 they're going to hate you. Amen. Uh, and, and through that relationship, we get so much peace, so much joy. Somebody might say, well, they're going through this and going through that. And I don't see them crying and I don't see them, uh, uh, just, Oh, woe with me and the world is on my shoulder. What is it that they're doing and that they have that I don't have? Well, is it that they have the Holy ghost and you don't, um, uh, because the Holy ghost comes straight directly from our father, God, uh, through his son, Jesus Christ. Amen. And so he fills us with his spirit and he's a comforter. This is why it's important for you to get filled with the Holy Ghost, not to be afraid of him because he's nothing to be afraid of, to fear him with love. Yes, but you need him because he gives you love and comfort and he speaks to you. He gives you that, 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 that calmness that you need. And that's how we talk to and have connection with and how the father imports his spirit and dwelling on the inside of us. And it's a great thing, yo. All right. So now promise, uh, promises to empower and still talking, talking about the Holy ghost some more. How do you get power? 
through the Holy Ghost. Acts chapter one lets us know that you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Power to do what? To be witnesses in all Samaria, Judea, and every other most part of the earth. Power to overcome things that that, that seems like a stumbling block, uh, block. Power to have joy. Power to have peace in everything that, that God has given uniquely designed for you to have. Now, when Peter speaks of promises in this chapter, he means a promise made voluntarily. So God voluntarily did this, you know, uh, rather than the result of a request, God saw that we need a savior. He saw that we needed Holy spirit. He saw that we, that man uh, didn't need to live by bread alone. He saw that every man should have his own wife, born a man, born a woman. He saw all these things and he set the governor on it and he made these things come to pass. Now see the connection between God's promises and God's grace. His grace is so sufficient. He saw that there was some errors that needed to be fixed. And because he had grace and mercy for us, he allowed for man to still be here and not wipe away, uh, or with, with human, uh, with the human race. Uh, and, and, and we wouldn't even be here to exist. So, and even though people are taking him for granted, those that don't want to acknowledge God and don't want to say that he's real, his grace is so sufficient in that area as well. He still let them be and, and, and waiting for them if they'll ever come to acknowledge him and his son and get filled with his Holy spirit. The Bible is saturated with promises of God. God promises promises are a result of his grace, unmerited favor, loving kindness, uh, that, now not to, not because we deserved it. It's because of the love and kindness. Uh, Peter explains that the precious promises made to his people are a direct result, result of the natural goodness of God to bless those whom he loved. And he said, I chasten those whom I love. And so being chastened by God doesn't mean that he's after you to kill you. He's after you to save your soul. So go ahead and come on back in. If you've been out, you've not done nothing too hard and too far fetched for you to be gone and not come back to God unless you've blasphemed. Now, if you've done anything else outside of that, then come on back. Don't worry about what other people are saying at the church. Don't worry about what other people are saying in your family. Come back to God. You've not done too much. Amen. This is a time for you to come to him now. Uh, repent and make that right with God. Amen. And those that you may have stepped over. All right. So it's natural for God to want to do good things for his people. All right. So look, and it's, it's natural. Like it's natural for us to breathe because you can't live without air. So you got to have that. And so looking at that and looking at how natural it is for God to bless us, that goes hand in hand. And I like that there. I'm going to keep that and that it's going to stay in my mind. So whenever I need to bring up that, that thought it's there, it registers. All right. So the greatest creation is us. Help me say that. The greatest creation is us. Now we was designed to be partakers and participants in his divine nature and separate from the corrupting forces of flesh. That goes back to Adam and Eve. They were, we, we were, they were not designed to die when he gave them warning and let them know, Adam, if you eat of this fruit, you surely is going to die. They knew not to do that, but because the serpent beguiled them with a question and made them think about that for a moment, like, Hmm. And so they believed him. And at that moment, they called God a lie with their actions. Death became a part of their life. And so with God's divine nature, that, that corruptness was never supposed to be in there. But since it has been a part of that uh, situation and we are here and things have become to be what they are now, you can live a lifestyle different from the corrupting forces of flesh. And what is the corrupt, uh, some of that corrupting forces of flesh? Well, you got fornication and you don't have to be a part of that. You got uh, adultery, um, lying, um, overeating, um, being messy, just all the things that 
or against the word of God uh, that Satan wants you to do. You don't have to do that. And so when we get filled with the Holy Ghost, that brings back that divine nature that we were supposed to have from jump and that brings it and he keeps us governed. And I don't want to do anything outside of the will of God because you always find yourself in trouble when you step outside of the will of God. So keep that in mind as you begin to teach and preach and talk to others about God and how great he is. He does have rules because there are some people that say, well, he got so many rules that the, the, those rules are to keep you safe and to keep you from getting in trouble and to keep you from going to hell. Amen. Let's read the scriptures. All right. So second Peter chapter one, verses four, uh, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, uh, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. That says a lot there. You, he made, he always lets us know he he's made a way for your escape, a way for your escape out of trouble. And what is trouble? You know, this, this, this with the trouble that you see now in this world, but there is more trouble to come if you die without Christ. And you know, the, and the, you know, there's some things in the world that lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye and the pride of life. These things are some corrupt things that keep people from serving God because they're after the money. They're chasing the money. And so my question to a lot of people tonight is, or today or whatever your time frame may be is, was it worth it or is it worth it? Because you can't take any of these things with you when you go. Now, God, we're still talking about Sunday school being equipped. God has equipped you to escape from these diverse temptations and things of that nature. All right. So promise keeper. The purpose of God's promises is to enable us to become partakers of the divine nature. God is at work in us. Okay. To transform us so we can truly live like those who bear divine, the divine image. God gives us power to live right, to transform, to be holy pretty much. All right. And so um, God's promises leads us to a great life. You have prosperity, not just in finances, but your soul prosperous. Amen. There are promises to eternal life, promises to forgiveness, healing, joy, peace, and prosperity. And I thank God for all of that. But you know, I, I, I really look at that eternal life because that gives me hope right there. And that equips me to do my daily job to think about that, you know, being filled with the Holy ghost. I got a place to go to when it's time to go home to be with Jesus. Amen. All right. So now God's greatest promise was, and still is the gift of his son, Jesus Christ. Jesus in turn promised that God would give us the Holy spirit. Those who come in and receive him. You can't get Holy spirit without receiving Jesus Christ hand in hand here. You don't get one without the other. Once you get filled with the Holy ghost, you continue to stay that way. Now, when you come into Christ and you ask God to forgive you and you accept Jesus as your Lord and savior, you don't just do that. And then just go, you need to be filled with the Holy ghost. That's why I said it's hand in hand. You need something to keep you now. Well, not something, someone to keep you now. And he is the keeper. All right. So spiritual growth, our union in Christ and our participation in his divinity provides us with the resources we need to live godly lives. Peter is careful to note that as Christians, we must give all diligence or do our part too. Uh, now we can be, uh, we can't be slack or complacent about our faith walk. Now, some people, they can be, uh, you know, a little lazy and complacent at times and not even realize that they're doing it. So always re remember to evaluate yourself in this area. Uh, we must, we must persevere and make every effort, uh, to perfect our relationship with God. You have to think about God on purpose. Thank him on purpose. Talk to him on purpose, live for him on purpose, be righteous on purpose. These are things that we have to work to 
to perfect. We don't just grow up and say, well, I'm saved now. God going to do everything else and you don't have to do anything else. You have to try and do your part. Amen. All right. Our spiritual development is ongoing. It's an ongoing process. We're forever learning. We're forever growing. It's constant growing, shaping and refining without these things. You're in a standstill. Uh Uh-huh. And that's not a good place to be. And just, you need to drop that in the comment. I am not at a standstill. I am growing, shaping and refining in Jesus. All right. So planting seeds, it talks about that in the Sunday school lesson. How many of you think that you can just get a plant, put it in a pot and don't water it and don't give it no new soil or sunlight and think that it's going to grow? It's not. So planting seeds in a garden and then failing to tend to them is crazy. So if you think you can just get saved and don't do anything else, that's crazy. God is saying you got to come up from that. And why would God tell you to be saved and be separate if all you had to do was get saved one time and go back out and sin and think you can make it in? He strictly is letting us know that if you get saved and when you do get saved, you're going to have to do some things and keep yourself in his hands. Amen. Faith is what brings us to Christ. You know, it brings us to Jesus. When you become a part of him, you want your faith to blossom. You don't want to just be at a standstill because we surely don't sin on purpose. Amen. Amen. All right. So verse five, and besides this, giving all diligence, add to your faith, virtue, and to virtue, knowledge, and to knowledge, temperance, and to temperance, patience, and to patience, godliness, and to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, uh, charity. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren, which is unfruitful, can't produce, nor unfruitful, in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. That says a lot right there. So you got to put on all these characteristics. And when it talks about these having patience and temperance, um, being kind, you know, spiritual uh, knowledge and spiritual maturity, these things produce that in a person. You're spiritually mature. That's why often if someone apologizes and repent first, that is not the weaker person. That That is one that is trying to make sure that they don't miss heaven for anything. Amen. So that makes you more mature when you apologize first, even though the world may look at it like, man, you weak, you went over there and apologize. No, that's not how that works. You apologize and you repent quickly because you have a gut governor and amen. And you want to make sure that you stay right with God. All right. Talking about spiritual knowledge and maturity, uh, spiritual maturity. Now developing all these characteristics, it brings about that. And if you're not practicing that, there needs to be an evaluation to see what's really going on and ask God to give you the anointing, which is filling you with the Holy ghost to come up in that area. There's nothing wrong with that. First, you got to admit that there is a problem. Um, and as we grow spiritually, so should our knowledge of spiritual truths. There, uh, the, the more we know about Jesus, the harder we will, um, strive to understand uh, to understand how to be more like him, how to become, uh, uh, Christ like, because that's what we work for. The knowledge of, of the word is critical. Now, how many of you know that that is very critical because you can't fight Satan without being knowledgeable of the word of God. You don't know your enemy until you read the word. The word is your sword. That's how you fight. This is a spiritual battle, not a carnal battle. Amen. So the knowledge of the word of God is critical to Christians maturity and development of godly lifestyle. So that's how you can pray for those that hate you. You can be kind to that individual that just cussed you out. You can do all things through Christ that strengthens you. That is to do good. And so God equips you for that. It's just like going to class without your materials. You don't have your pencil. You don't have your pen. And if you're in an art class, you don't have no scissors, no rulers, no glue, but yet and still you come to class and say that you're ready to work. It does not work that way. We have to come to class equipped, fully equipped. Have you charge your feet with peace because you have to wear that every day. That's what God wants us to do. He wants us to walk in peace. He equipped us to do that. And in him, we have hope with Jesus. There is hope without him. There is none. 
because you can't get to heaven without him. I, I love to tell you that because that means you're listening and you have a chance. People that are not here any longer, they don't have a chance. So the blessing about this to you, my friend, is you have a chance. Amen. All right. So confidence in our calling. And while you guys are turning to that section in the book, there's something that I wrote down in my notes. Um, with the, the, the part about patience and I, 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 when I was thinking about this, this stood out to me because I worked in a nursing home for a little bit, not long, but I also worked in the hospital and we've had all kinds of clients, which were patients to come through that needed somebody to just love them and be patient because they were sick. You never know who's going to be standing up over your head when it's your turn to be sick. So always be kind to people, even with the elderly people, because sometimes they may have to go to the restroom a lot because, you know, their bladder. Uh, God wants us to be kind. That's that patience that God wants us to have. And this is a very important characteristic that we must develop because if we don't, we're in trouble. That's why we make haste and make waste. We get in trouble in a lot of situations because we don't have that patience. Uh, that's one characteristic that uh, I, I am focusing on at this time because I need more of it. That's something that you can't have enough of being patient with your children, your spouse, everybody around you, just having more patience and try to understand other people and, before you try to make them understand you, you know, that will keep you, uh, in a place where you're in a good standing with the Lord. Understand why somebody don't want to take a bath every day. When I was in the nursing home, it's because people was coming in and throwing cold water on them sometimes, you know, or they were scared to fall in the shower. And so that gives you that opportunity to go in and say, look, I understand and this is just a testimony and an example of what you can do and how to do. I understand that you don't want to take a bath because you're afraid to get in that shower and that you're going to fall. But if I'm standing in here with you and I got someone else helping us, we're not going to let you fall and begin to work up that trust level with that individual. Somebody may need that on the job. Amen. And God will bless you in that area. Uh, you'd be surprised that person will look for you every day. I'm a witness because I know, cause they can't wait to see those that love them and are patient and understanding, uh, because you're going to need someone to be patient and understanding with you. Amen. All right. So confidence in your, our calling God must work in us before we can do his will. That is so true. You got to be changed. God has to do a work in your heart and in your mind before you can go out and do his will. You can't go out and do his will if you don't know him, if you don't think like him, if you don't behave like him, and if you don't know his word because you don't know what to do. Uh, you have to be trained. You have to be changed. Amen. We must be willing to do God's work. Don't get up just dragging. I talked this, uh, to my children about this tonight. I said, don't come in here when we finna have Sunday school, Bible lessons, you know, study and whatever else we do when it comes to the word of God coming in here, dragging because you put your game first. You put your, 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 your devices first, your, your, whatever it is that you leisure with your telephone. Uh, you putting that before you put God. So when you come in here, huh, no, don't even come in here like that because if it's like that, then I don't want you in here. And that's how God feels about it. When he tells us to do something, we should be happy to do his work, willing to do it, ready to do what he called us to do. We must cooperate with God. And that's your mindset as well. If God told you to give away some money, you must cooperate with the mindset that you need to have, which is a good one. Happy that you're able to do that. And ask me, how do I know? Because I've had to do that as well. And God even told me how to give the money. He said, now smile about it. And God gave back everything that I put out. So I release, uh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I release that up on your life today that you'll be able to do what God has called you to do and have a happy attitude, a good attitude about it. All right. So we must cooperate with God instead of following those who are spiritually blind. How many know the blind leads can't, can't do nothing, but, but lead the blind into a, a ditch or a wall or a tree. You know, that's just like a person driving a car that can't see. I don't want you driving me anywhere and you can't see up the road because both of us will be uh, up the tree or in a corner or on the side of the road somewhere. If we ain't running into something that'll kill us because the blind trying to lead the blind will lead you in a place of destruction. So don't follow those that are teaching, uh, that, that, that are teaching false doctrine. It'll lead you in a place of torment forever. All right. So with diligence, 
we take our invitation from God and accept the benefits of salvation. You hear that word before salvation benefits of salvation. I mean, it's not just, you know, we being saved It's benefits in this thing, y'all. And it's lots of them for one. We don't have to go to hell. Number two, we can have peace right here on earth. Amen. And we're saved from the corruption of the flesh. Hallelujah. All right. Now, Peter is encouraging the believers to be confident in their salvation. Once you become saved, can't nobody take that from you. The only person can stop you from being saved is you. Amen. So be what God called you to be. And that is holy. When you get saved, that ain't all you got to do. You got to come in the Lord's house and stay saved. Can't just get saved and go back out and say, well, I done done that. I done gave my life to the Lord. It's done now. It's complete. Now, nah, honey, you got to do some work. Amen. All right. So it is not enough that we confess Christ. Amen. This backs up what I was saying. We must grow in Christ. That means you're going to do some changing. Amen. Some constant changing in order to have assurance in our salvation because without that assurance you won't be making it in all right <clears throat> wherefore uh the rather uh wherefore the rather uh brethren give diligence to make your calling and election sure for if we do these things ye shall never fall so uh, an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. All right, so uh, the seven spe uh, special qualities, and we're just about done, y'all. All right, so in that that we talked about, we named about temp the patience and virtue and all that. Uh, the qualities strengthen and encourage and improves our lives and, uh, you know, and the lives of others around us because they can see the change and they can benefit from that. When you being real sweet to your spouse, they receive those benefits as well. When you being real sp sweet to your children, and that don't mean don't give them a whooping when they need it because you need to do that, but they, they receive those benefits as well. They become more close close to you they can see how God is changing and using you so and and even your parents and whoever else is around you be that light uh well, where these qualities uh are there will be an abundance of good works this means we are not just sitting around being idle don't ever forget what God has done for us uh through his son Jesus uh share the message to everyone all right. Verse 12. Wherefore, I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things, through, uh, though ye know uh, them and be established in the present truth. Yea, I think it meets it meet as long as I am in the tabernacle to stir you up by putting you in remembrance, knowing that shortly I must put off this tabernacle, even as our Lord uh, Jesus Christ had shown me. So that's what Peter's was. Peter was saying, he's letting him know he doesn't have much time, but he's going to stir up their soul about this word and righteousness. And that's what we ought to be doing for everyone. Stirring up their soul and righteousness, letting them know what time it is being encouraged, staying in the word of God, staying in the faith. God will supply you with everything you need to carry out what he has called you to do. Look at Moses. I'm going to say this and we're getting ready to close. Moses told you he was called to speak to Pharaoh and let him know to let God's people go. And he comes up and says he can't talk good, you know. And so God didn't, didn't excuse him from the assignment. He told him to, you know, get Aaron, take your brother with you. He still had to go and do what God told him to do. That is for you, my friend. God gave you an assignment and you're not going to be excused from it. You're just delaying what he told you to do and making life a little hard for yourself. So if that is you. Let us be about our father's business. Now, God equips us to be, uh, to do what, do the work he has called us to do. Have confidence in him. He has anointed you to walk in your calling. All right. I thank God for the word on today. My brothers and sisters, thank you all for allowing us to share the word of God with you. Do us a favor. If you're new around here, please consider subscribing. Hit that subscribe button so you can get new content every time we upload the Sunday school lesson and uh, whatever else we upload. And then 
Go ahead and share this and tag it to a friend so that they can know that the Sunday school lesson is on. And I pray God's blessings over your life and that you have a prosperous week in Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. And until next time, my friends, bye-bye.